Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm going to take a picture from my newest coloring book called The Buns. And you might want to stop here because these are the pencils that you're going to need for today. But first I'm going to go over shading a little bit. So stick with me. I'll try not to make it too boring and you will have this result in the end. So to start out with, I'm going to show you, like I said, about shading. Now here is the light source. I'm going to make the sun. So it'll be coming from that direction. Now, yes, it's coming from the right, but it kind of looks like it would be almost coming from the back of the object that I'm drawing. So you have to kind of imagine that this sun is almost behind your right shoulder. Now, just because it, the sun is pointing in that direction and that's where the light source is from, doesn't mean that's the only light. I drew that little rainbow over there with arrows because there's ambient light. There's light all over the place unless you're basically in a cave um, and it's pitch dark. So I'm just drawing a cylinder here and I'm telling you about a cylinder shape. It kind of seems random, but it's not. It's one of the basic shapes and it really does appear everywhere. For example, a tree trunk. Um, the same methods would apply. Okay, I'm starting here. What I'm doing here is if the light source was behind your right shoulder as you're looking at this video, this is not a flat surface, meaning this cylinder. So it would form a light and a dark area. Now this would be the dark area because it's starting to curve around toward the back of the cylinder. This could even be a can, it could be a cup or a mug or a thermos. So as it goes around, it gets a little bit darker, but then as it gets toward the back again, where I'm coloring now, you would get a little bit of a reflection of the ambient light, so it's not the darkest part. So the darkest area is what I did first. I did that straight line going up up and down, and it it's a, there's a gradient in each direction. So as you go left, it gets a little lighter. And as you go right, it gets a little lighter. And when you go right, it gets very light at one point because that's where the reflection spot is from the sun. So as I'm drawing here, I'll be talking about it for a few more minutes and then we'll get into the mushroom and see how it applies there. So now the lighter color on that left hand side is lighter than the dark area, but it's never as, as light as the reflection spot. Now that's a flat surface on, on top and the light is coming from one direction, but I'm not going to add gradation to the top of the can. I'm just going to leave it the way it is and uh, just go from there. Now, if you draw a tree, of course, it's much more complicated and there'll be a whole lot of detail and you would give indications of the bark. And although I'm not going to draw a tree, it's kind of the same for the mushroom. Now, like I said before, trees, bottles, cups, mugs, a birthday cake, they all have cylindrical shapes. And there are also many other things that have cylindrical shapes that we probably don't even think about. For example, our arms and legs. The human body is really hard to draw, and one of the reasons is because it's hard to make cylindrical shapes or rounded shapes look 3D and dimensional. So when you can figure out how to incorporate that gradation into a picture, it helps so much. Now you can see the top of this object, so what that basically means also is that you're looking down at it from a slight angle. So maybe you'd be sitting at, at a table and you'd be sitting up regularly and looking at the object so you'd see a bit of, of this. Now I'm just, I'm just blending this in with my fingers just for the sake of time for the video. Now I'm looking here if the if the light source would be over our right shoulder the shadow would be coming off of the left hand side and shadows are relatively easy and I'm not going to really fuss with it too much so 
what you basically do is draw two lines and then a curved line on, on, on top and then just fill it in. And I really didn't draw the surface of where this object was sitting, like a table or a counter, but I think you can, you can get the idea of the direction even better now that, that the shadow's there, meaning the direction that the sun would be heading. So it's not perfect, but you can see that the object now looks 3D and light and shadow is basically everything in art. So that's a great way to start. And I will go over more object like s objects in future videos like circles, spheres, um, cubes, and I'm just erasing some of the area that I smudged over the top with my finger. And there, there you have it. Now here's that same picture that we were coloring mushrooms on last last week. You know, this this mushroom is going to be very different. This is a morel mushroom and it's kind of complicated, but I want to show you not only how to shade here, but how to make the morel mushroom look really like a morel mushroom without doing too much fussing. So I started with 50% French gray. And the first thing that I'm coloring in is that dark area. Now I'm assuming that the sun is going to be situated in the exact same area as I was thinking that it was when I was drawing the first cylinder. So over my right shoulder. Now it kind of messes up the picture a little bit, but that's okay because mostly I'm I'm using this image for a tutorial. Oop, now that color is ginger root and I'm just basically forming the shadows at, at this point and the gradation from the shadow to the reflection area on the right side. I also wanted to show you that you, you, I mean, you, you can color any way you like, but you don't have to only color with little tiny circles or very smooth strokes. I come from an illustrator background, so coloring is a bit different for me, and I like to show different things. So rather than just filling in the area, I, I like to do it so it looks interesting and detailed and rich and stylized. So maybe it looks a little more scratchy or a little bit more possibly even messy according to some people, but I really like it that way. So what, what I'm doing here is drawing lines to form the shadows, little actual little broken lines. Um, because you can draw shadows by actually recreating what you see from a picture or an actual mushroom. So if you look very, very close, you can see really little tiny details. So you can try to recreate that rather than just filling in the area. Now I'm taking 20% warm gray. And filling in that dark area once again. Now I'm gonna take 20% warm gray and make a bit of a shadow underneath the top part of the mushroom onto the stem. Since the sun would be slightly above us and pointing downward, there would be a little bit of a shadow there. Now I'm also adding a shadow at the bottom where it would be touching the dirt. It would naturally be darker down there. What I picked up here was the Prismacolor Ebony Jet Black Super Soft Graphite Pencil. And I started to draw some of the detail and I really liked it. I kind of did it by accident because I thought it was brown and I had been drawing the cylinder in the first part 
with this pencil. If you need a great sketching pencil, it's wonderful. So it makes super dark lines, but being a typical graphite pencil, it does leave some shine. And I, I didn't hate that here because it's a mushroom, it's a morel, they're complicated, there is light shining on it. So I kind of went with it and I just wanted to see what it was gonna look like. Now I'm going back and forth between the ginger root and the peach beige. In the darkest areas and the lightest areas, I'm just using less pressure and less, uh, I'm filling it in less in the lighter areas. You don't have to fill in every single white part in every single picture. Now I stepped back and took a look for a second and I thought that the bottom of the mushroom was a little too dark and similar to the top of the mushroom. So I decided to erase some of it and sort of blend it in with the eraser. So I dusted off the eraser stuff and just moved on for there, from, from there. And then picked up the ginger root and started to blend again. And I really liked the results. It kind of looked earthy and smudgy and probably it would be a mistake in any other image, but on this mushroom that's close to the, to the ground and probably, you know, has some dirt attached to it, it was perfect. I'm drawing a lot of vertical, almost like dotted lines up and down the mushroom with all, all different colors. There's that ebony color again. And I'm just drawing some detail. Now I'm not trying to make this look like it's gonna be when it's finished. This is sort of setting up the background and I'm leaving that light section light on purpose with just minimal interference because I am going to go over it and uh, show you how to make the detail of the morel mushroom. By the way, these are super earthy colors and you don't have to follow this at all. You just need a slight range of, of colors. Now, I'm going in there pretty dark and drawing some lines which look like they're big mistakes at this point, but that's sort of dividing the area up. And you'll see what happens as I, as I continue. The, the, the morel mushrooms almost look like they have little dents. Um, they, they almost look like craters to the moon. They're so cool. And if you, if you don't know what one looks like, Look it up, I think they're so neat. And once again, you could do it any color you, you want. I tried to make this a little bit accurate, so it looks kind of boring in the beginning, but it comes out really neat. So the lines, those swervy lines on the left-hand side in the darker shadowed area will have more of a shadow on their left-hand side. So when you draw the line, you make a little bit of a shadow to the left because that's how the sun would cast the shadow. On the right hand side, it would fall to the right, meaning the shadow. So the shadow is slightly downcast also. And now in my opinion comes the fun part because I'm gonna take 70% French gray and espresso and I'm gonna to start to form those little craters or those deep shapes that make the morel mushroom look really interesting and strange. It almost looks alien-esque, if you ask me. So what I tried to do first was use espresso, and I started, well, espresso's a little bit darker than the, um, French gray, so I use it in the darker areas, and I wasn't being too particular, just because it's very dark and shadowy there to begin with, so you don't have to, or I felt you, you didn't have to completely 
make everything perfect. So I drew some little ditches and divots and gave indications that there was a lot of shapes going on and not a flat surface. I started to move away from the dark area and move toward their light reflection area with the espresso and the point was a little duller and just know that when you're using colored pencils the sharper the point the more accurate the color is so I wasn't too worried that I was heading in the in, the, in that direction because this point was dull and I knew I was going to move to the French gray and use a super sharp point because things had to be a little bit more accurate in the lighter area because you would naturally see it more. So I'm trying to make this look like there are lighter areas that lead into darker, kind of mustier areas that go deep within, well not deep, but deeper, they're not as superficial, into the, into the mushroom. You know, it just hit me what this kind of looks like. It almost looks like an odd kind of webbing. Like it's all kind of interlocking and woven. And the part that's on the surface of the mushroom is lighter. And then as it goes deep, appropriately, it gets darker. And those two colors, espresso and 70% uh, French gray, were perfect. The 70% gray to me is almost like a dark mushroom color to begin with. So all these colors that I recommended at the beginning ended up to be really good choices for this specific mushroom. So the rest of the video is just spent with me using the 70% French gray and forming this odd little alien webbing on these on these morel mushrooms and once again I, I know I said it before but if you've never seen one of these look them up they are so odd and so interesting oh if if you're watching this and you and you don't know it I want to let you know that I'm having a Prismacolor giveaway right now I'm giving a set of 150 Prismacolor pencils along with your choice of my coloring books. I will put the link below. And if you don't subscribe to me yet, please hit that button below, subscribe to me, and also hit that little bell next to it because that will alert you when I put out videos, which is two times every single week, and this way you won't miss a thing. Oh, and I want to thank Sherry McNutt for suggesting that I add a list of the pencils that I use at the beginning of the video, and I decided to incorporate that. I thought that was a great idea, so thank you so much, Sherry, and I hope it's helpful to everybody. I want to thank you all for joining me for these videos. I love doing them, and I so appreciate that you're all here. If you feel so inclined, give me a like and share because not everybody knows and it's my one of, well, one of my goals for 2018 to get a little bit more well known so I can keep doing what I'm doing. So that's about it for now. There's the morel mushroom. And there it is compared to the original cylinder. So you can see the same areas are highlighted and the same areas are dark or are in shadow. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Oh, the next one I will probably do on shading will be a sphere. So thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the next video and see you soon. Bye.